This is a service sheet that I made up for my students that they used in class uh, and of course it can be used to service any gas furnace. It's kind of a general sort of thing and during this thing if you don't understand some of the uh, procedures go to the Gray Furnace Man uh, website. I'll have this same thing there and I'm going to reference different videos that explain just what that uh, operation is and that may help. Okay, let's get started on it. Uh, you come in the house, you check the uh, thermostat for level and tight against the wall and set it above room temperature. The reason I say the tight against the wall, some people don't, they're not very mechanical. Those things get loose, they just leave them there. Fix it for them. Uh, level, most thermostats don't be, be level anymore, but it's an aesthetic issue. Okay, you've set it above the room temperature, so the unit should be running when you get in the basement. Check the filter. First thing you do, every one of these silly things, is check the filter, and you know how dirty it is. Okay, while this furnace is operating, you should be using a CO detector in the supply air. Snark on the supply air, put your CO detector in there, and make sure there's no CO. Because if you get CO, at that point, it's no longer a service, it's a repair. And you've got to figure out where the CO is coming from. CO, by the way, is carbon monoxide. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the flame safety control. That's number four. Okay, if this is a pilot operated furnace, it has a standing pilot, you're going to check the pilot flame. You're going to be looking to see is it yellow or is it blue? It should be blue, should be kind of roughly looking. It shouldn't be lazy like a candle flame. And clean the pilot. Uh, you can clean, oftentimes you can clean them with a little bit of compressed air. Sometimes you have to take them apart. But you need to get any crap that's in there out. Because sometimes uh, they'll kind of get plugged up and that'll cause that lazy flame. So you're going to look at that. B, you're going to check the pilot dropout. Now what the heck is a pilot dropout? Well, the pilot dropout is on the old pilot furnaces if the pilot blew out within three minutes the unit had to shut down okay it had to shut all gas off to the appliance that's a pilot safety so you're gonna blow the pilot out and wait for the click once it clicks try to relight the pilot with a match if the pilot does relight you've got a gas valve problem. So the gas valve is going to need to be replaced. Okay, newer furnaces, hot surface igniter. Check the ohms, above 150 ohms recommend replace. There are different numbers on this and I'll try to throw a couple of videos up there about that. But uh, check it for white spots. If there's a white spot in it, it means it's about ready to fail, or maybe it has failed. Anyway, uh, if the resistance is above 150 ohms in general, replace. Check flame rod microamps. Okay, you're gonna have to go to the flame rod in this thing. Find the flame rod, put your microamp meter in series with it, and check to see what the microamps are reading when the thing's running. Uh, these uh, flame rods generally are on pilotless ignitions and they're sticking into the flame usually opposite side of where the hot surface igniter is and you're going to check the microamps on that before you do anything else G you're going to go ahead and remove and clean the flame rod and you can, check, you can clean it with steel wool, you can clean it with sandpaper, everybody has some kind of idea of what you should and shouldn't use. But it do, does need to be clean. And then recheck the microamps and see if you made a difference. Because you may very well have made a difference in it. And that gives you some idea of what's going on. 
Okay. Then you're going to shut the gas off. That means you'll use probably the gas cock or something like that. And you just shut the gas off. Okay, when you shut that gas off, that gives that unit. Now, this is a newer furnace that has a hot surface igniter on it. This isn't the older furnaces. You want to shut the gas off and wait for it to shut off. It should shut off in about a half a second in most of these things. It's going to try three times in most furnaces, not all. Most furnaces will try three times. They're under a soft lockout at that point. And then after the third time, they should go into a hard lockout and it should blink a code saying flame failure. You gotta check that whenever you service a furnace and make sure it works. Okay, moving down to number five on the burners. You need to clean the burners. Now, if they're ribbon types, you have to remove them and clean them. If they're in shot, sometimes you don't have to remove them. It depends on how much air is in it. Or <laughs> depends on how much crap is in them. If it's an in shot burner, uh, you don't generally have to remove them, but you do have to take a look at them. Uh, and use a vacuum cleaner, toothbrush, whatever it takes to get any crap that's off inside. Okay, while you're fooling with these burners, you need to be checking the heat exchanger for cracks. Now older furnaces, you could shine a light in there and you could see quite a bit of the heat exchanger. Newer furnaces, it's a lot harder. You can put a flashlight in there, but it doesn't tell you a whole heck of a lot. You can use a camera here, um, you know, with the cameras on a flex line, you can use that uh, if you think you need to. We're going to have other ways of checking the, uh, the heat exchanger here. Now we're going to fire off the main burners. We're going to adjust. If there is a primary air adjustment on the burners, you need to adjust it to get rid of the yellow tips. Now we're going to check for flame change when the circulating fan starts. Now this is important. If the flame changes when the fan starts, it means there's probably a crack in the heat exchanger. So we're going to have to look real close. The fan doesn't start right away. It takes 30 to 45 seconds to start. So when that fan starts, you'll be watching those burners to see if there's any change in the burners. Okay, on number eight, older furnaces, they have a draft hood. Uh, put a match up to the draft hood. While it's running, the match should be pulled into the draft hood. Now we're going to start checking amp draw. Okay, we need amp draw of the circulating fan motor. So that's you are using your clamp meter to do this. Uh, you are Comparing it to any information you have, you may have to pull a fan motor to actually find the amps for that motor, but it should be running at or below rated load amps. While you're at it, pull the cap off and use your cap tester to check the cap and see if its strength is proper. Okay, you're going to check motor and fan bearing condition. Now this direct drive blower all you're really going to do is rotate that motor and be sure it rotates smoothly. Move the shaft back and forth to see if there's excessive clearance. If it's a belt drive blower, you're going to do that on the motor, but you're also going to check the uh, fan bearings and see if they have a problem. Okay. Check the belt. If it's a belt drive, pull the belt off. Be sure it's in good condition. Uh, and be sure that it's as tight as it should. Okay, check clean fan blower. This is number 12. And motor. Okay, that circulating fan, 
it can get a lot of dirt in it in a short time if someone has neglected to change filters or doesn't put a filter in it at all or whatever. You got to look at those fan blades, determine whether it's ready to be cleaned or it's okay. You put, to clean it, you're going to have to pull the blower assembly out and wash it. Now, if it's a 90% furnace, you may want to pull that blower out and check the secondary heat exchanger. If for any reason you take a 90% furnace and pull a blower out, you want to go under there and check that secondary heat exchanger. It's a, it looks like kind of an air conditioning coil and it can get pretty plugged up and it's hard to tell it's, that it's plugged up. Okay, 13, you're going to oil a circulating fan motor and blower. Obviously, if it's belt drive, you're going to look for oilers on the motor. Uh, and the uh, blower wheel itself. If it's direct drive, it's going to just simply have uh, oilers on the motor. Now, understand many motors anymore do not have any oilers at all, so they are sealed bearing and there's nothing you can do. Okay, 14. Clean the return air plant. This is something a lot of guys don't do. You always bring a vacuum when you come down here. It makes it easier to clean burners and things like that. The return air plenum does tend to gather quite a bit of crap. And so it's a good idea to clean it out. Okay, if the furnace, this is number 15, if the furnace has an inducer, check the amp draw of the inducer when it's running. It should be at or below its rated load. Check the bearings of it while you're there. Uh, does it turn smoothly? Is there excessive clearance in the bearings? Number 16, if it's a two-stage furnace, you want to fire off both stages. And you want to run it in low stage and high stage to be sure all things work as they should when it goes to that uh, second stage. Okay, while the furnace is running, you're also going to check delta T. That's 17. Delta T is the temperature difference between the return air and the supply air. It should be below the model plate rating specs. It should be well below them, actually. Uh, the amount of temperature difference across the coil or delta T depends on the furnace and the blower speed setting. But it should be below the ratings that are on the plate. Okay, if it has a pressure switch or a centrifugal switch, you need to check the operation of those switches. Now don't disconnect a wire to test them. You gotta pull the hose off. There's a hose on those things, pop that hose off. If the furnace immediately shuts down, then you know it's working properly. Most of these furnaces actually check that themselves. There's a few of them, a few of the older ones didn't. But most of them check themselves. A centrifugal switch is pretty unusual anymore, but it's a switch on the inducer motor that makes when it comes up to speed. Or if it is not closed when it comes up to speed, of course the furnace won't fire. But it has to be open when the inducer shuts off. So it should be open and then closed when the inducer comes on. If it's a condensing furnace, as is a 90% furnace, you're going to have to clean the concentrate condensate drain. That's another good one for your vacuum cleaner. You can suck out the P-trap and so on like that with a, uh, with a shop bag. Got to be kind of careful not get too rambunctious with putting a lot of vacuum on it, but just enough to pull any water out of the P-trap. One little note here, you may have to refill that P-trap before the unit will run normally. Okay, if it's got a metal vent, that would be an 80% furnace. Check it for rust. Hit it with a screwdriver. Take a screwdriver tip and pretty aggressively 
hit especially the bottom of the pipe. If you punch through it, obviously it's got a problem. The last thing, some of these furnaces you have turned the gas valve on and off. That valve may not have been turned on and off for years and years. Who knows? Get your electronic gas leak detector and go over that thing and make sure there's no gas leaks. Your nose is your first indication. That's the best indication. But go over it with your electronic and make sure there are no gas leaks. This last one, make sure the furnace is running when you're leaving the mechanical room. This has gotten me in more trouble than probably any other part of this. When you put everything back together, you got to make sure it's running. One of the big common ones is you put the fan cover on and there's a shut off switch when you take the fan cover off. And if you don't get the fan cover back on right, then it's going to, the furnace is not going to run. So make sure the furnace fires off and you haven't left a gas valve off or a gas cock or, you know, flame rod wire off or something like that. Make sure that it's running and the fan is running and everything when you leave the mechanical room. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, I will have all these little video references up there that may help if you get stuck in the middle of this. I hope this thing helps.